Do you think God is stupid that he doesn't see our heart that we're going to persist kicking him in the chin? If you're clumsy, and he was going to forgive us anyway. Kicking it. Well, if you're, I mean your leg is uncontrollable. Now, if you have cerebral palsy, even maybe you can solve it. But, uh, but if uh, you kick God in the chin over and over, and you're saying you're sorry, God's going to say, prove it before I forgive you. And you prove it by repenting. In other words, you stop kicking him in the chin. You don't keep on doing it. And so you go back from this side over to here. Now, that's called backsliding, and uh, actually, you can actually become apostate. An apostate is actually is one who's become a, who was a Christian and has denied the faith, denied God exists, denied Jesus ever saved him, curses the Holy Ghost, and he's actually unpardonable. I'm going to try to space this out as evenly as I can. John, I'm discriminating against you because you're on the side that's done all the talking, but I'm going to get to you, I okay. promise, okay? Go ahead. Uh, I'm not real clear now. You said that you have an ultimate intention to you live entirely for God or you live entirely for self, and now you're saying you can go back and forth? Yes, but not at the same time. You can't live it for both at the same time. You can oscillate, but you cannot do it at the same time. But your ultimate intention, though, we're talking ultimate intention. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about, you know, what happens for two minutes of this day when you make a mistake and you or you, or you, you sin and you backslide Sin's or whatever. Mistakes are not. I know, but you're, we're, we're saying your ultimate intention. Now, can't you have an ultimate intention to serve God and to, to, to have your life dedicated to God? And that's your ultimate intention. And yet, backslide occasionally, little minor sins here and there, because Impossible. not very many Christians are perfect. Well, I know quite a few thousand in America who are. Who are uh, perfect. Uh, see, <laughs> uh, I even know some in Orlando and Tampa. Uh, even in Gainesville. How about no. Miami? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Uh, I've only been to Miami for one week. There you go. Uh, you had a good point there. No, you cannot live for this. Actually, the Bible talks about light and darkness. It says, walk in the light as God is in the light, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, will cleanse you from all sin. But if you walk in darkness, and then you don't have that cleansing percentage. There's either light or darkness. You can't. No man can serve two masters. I have known a number of Christians throughout my lifetime, and I don't know of one of them who claimed to be perfect and without sin. And yet I still, you know, I, they all believe and completely that, they, that their ultimate intention would be that they are serving God. Okay, now they may say that, that their intention is that, but either their subordinate choices or their volitional acts will disprove that they're living for this over here, because you'll see the fruit, and you'll know the trees, the orange tree, and you see oranges growing. So when you see the fruit of sin, you'll know they're over here on this side. Even though they might say they're over here, that's called a hypocrite. Actually, the, the uh, doctrine of perfection is uh, synonymously used throughout the Bible as sanctification, or righteousness, and holiness. And those four words in the New Testament are mentioned at least 200 times. I know the word perfected, or, per, per, or perfect, or perfection, those three uh, forms of the word perfect, they are used at least 40 times in the New Testament alone. Because I actually have a few messages on that line, and I got a concordance out, and I went through every word or variation of the word perfect in the New Testament. And I got me a sermon on it. So that word is in the Bible, okay. and it does refer to Christians. Okay, I'm just out of curiosity on the same exact one. How come if Christians have to be perfect, and if they sin, they're not Christians anymore, or they're not considered a hypocrite? Why is so much attention in the Bible, as, as well as in the church, and practice through way of confession, stuff, so much attention brought towards the ever-forgiving Christ, and you can be forgiven for your sins no matter how many times you sin, you can always, as long as you truly mean it and all that stuff, right. But how come so much attention is, I mean, a lot of attention, and confession is big, you know. Mm -hmm. First of all, Jesus is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
So you're not only forgiven, you're actually cleansed. In other words, that sin's removed from your heart because you have renounced it and you turn from living for yourself to living for God. You renounce this way and you turn to God. That's called repentance. It's a 180 degree turnaround. And so after that, the emphasis is on holiness and perfection in, in moral ethics, that is, because that's the only way God can get glory out of your life, and that's the only way you can actually truly love your neighbor and do good for them. Actually, the, the big buzzword around the whole world for this matter right now is love. Everybody talks about love. The, we see, or we read the Bible then? Well, in a way, yes. So then how can you... But there's a problem there. You have to be careful. Why? You better make sure you have the right interpretation. <laughs> uh, you know if you have the right interpretation. Very good. If you have an interpretation with any contradictions in it, you can rest assured your interpretation of the Bible is false or incorrect because there are no contradictions in the Bible. I have a theology, as you might well aware. I have not contradicted myself one time here. Many preachers cannot preach 15 minutes.